on that note, I will pass over to my good friend John. Thanks, Liam. Okay, uh, so what can I tell all these people who have been in the industry for far longer than I have? Um, one question for everyone. Uh, who has been mapping actively for less, less than three years? Less than three years? Less than three years. Three. Okay. So what I can tell you is why I picked it up so late. Uh, I can also tell you why I didn't pick it up until three years ago. And I can talk about how I use that story to talk to our customers and sort of invigorate them about using the software. Um, I think th there's one thing that I, I have two that tests whether it's something easy to explain. One, can I explain it to someone after five pints in the pub? Um, and the other, does my mum understand? Uh, <laughs> So that was, uh, I, I've only been with MyJet for two years, and then I started using the mapping software before that. And uh, my, my story or introduction into the, the mind mapping world is that my boss at the time uh, was sort of typing away in a meeting. I was like, oh, what are you doing? He was like, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm taking my notes. And I was like, well, that doesn't look like words. And he was like, yeah, it's a mapping software. Um, so I was like, oh, that looks good. Why haven't you told us about it? Or how long have you been using it? So we were about a team of five. Uh, and he said, well, it's just, you know, just the way I work. So it was kind of the opposite of, uh, of Nick's story, where he was keeping it for himself uh, and didn't want to share that with other people. And I think a lot of the, the customers or people that we speak to are individuals. Uh, so they're individuals who maybe have learned it at school and capture information that way and take notes that way and it's only when they share is when it actually takes off. So the, the challenge is how to move people from that individual way of working into teams and, and that's where I think and some of the guys in MindJet think that it's going to start to, to snowball and the more people will know about it. So. Um, I'm John Barber. My uh, job role is pre-sales, uh, pre-sales manager, which means I've got to understand what people want to do with the software, why they want to do it, how can they do it. Um, so I'm not really a, a salesman. I sort of carry salesmen's handbags around uh, and, and help them out in, in meetings. Uh, so this is what I've been uh, explaining. Uh, people often view the software as a, an isolated tool um, because they use it for, for note-taking. Uh, and it's the best tool out there for note-taking, in my mind. Uh, I really enjoy uh, Craig's uh, talk on, on the iPad because that is the perfect device for taking notes down. It then is what happens next. So it depends on what you, you want to do. So a gentleman over there said uh, it's what you want to do and who you're doing it for. And so, for example, this is a presentation, so I spent quite some time changing colours. Uh, but I've also added lots of imagery in there. Sharing that with someone else it's not going to mean much unless I annotate it and add some notes in there. So how do we move uh, mapping uh, from mapping, and I'll talk about the word mind mapping soon. How do we move that uh, from an isolated tool into the, the mainstream? So these are the questions I asked myself, and uh, I've explained it already, so I heard about it from my boss. Uh, it inspired me to use it because I was... Uh, effectively a consultant at that time, helping tailor systems, so I did a bit of programming in, at university. Um, so help tailoring systems for, for our clients. So I was struggling with handling all the documents, and I had to make it look like I understood what they were talking about in the meeting, and then afterwards provide them, this is what we're going to do, sign on the dotted line, this is what you pay for, and we make sure we deliver to that. So. I was, you know, I was struggling a bit to do that. Um, I, was, I was getting it done, but it was taking longer than my boss because he was cheating. Uh, so that, that's what in, inspired me to use it. So from then on, uh, I said uh, to my other teammates, come on, let's get one of these licenses uh, for us. And we built a template, uh, started to build documentation, as we've seen earlier today. And then we started to provide projects that way. And we didn't necessarily do more work. We just went home earlier, uh, which was always a good thing. Uh, I still use it because I actually believe in it. So I often ask the, the sales guys in our company, I say, so if you leave 
we left the company, would you, would you still use the software? And everyone has said yes. Um, some would say that when they joined the company, they didn't join because of the, the mapping element. Uh, but when they start using it and applying it into a process, it's stuck with them and they don't know now what they would do uh, without that. Uh, why isn't everybody working this way? Well, that's the big question. Uh, we'll get to that. So uh, this is a bit of a, uh, maybe a tangent, but I'm going to talk about a little bit about working as an individual and then going into teams and a little bit about computing because I quite like software. Um, so individuals to teams. So we've heard about this today. Um, visualization has always been part of history, hand-drawn uh, in the Renaissance period. Um, and the whole non-linear linear, note-taking and the left and right brain, we all know about uh, that. And uh, Tony popularizing that uh, as a concept, and therefore we have uh, mind mapping. But let's look at technology. So we've moved, not, all, not everyone's moved, but uh, we're moving from hand-drawn mind maps, and they have a place and a, a use for, for people. But computers have helped us take that from individuals into sharing with other people. So that's uh, Alan Turing. Um, he's a pretty cool guy. Uh, helped to invent basically the father of computer science, maybe. Uh, who did a lot of the algorithms and the first uh, first computers. Again, this is debatable, um, but this is general generally documented this way. Let's first, talk about sharing and collaborating. So, how do we move from working on our own to teams? So that's all about distributed computing. Uh, the ARPANET was the, the, uh, the first internet in the 70s. Um, and uh, there's great uh, books on that, stories about people in labs with giant computers, with these uh, typing one word in another university and it was sort of popping up. Uh, it would have been a great time to be, to be, a, be around or studying. Um, then we move to visual stuff. So operating systems are visual. That's the first <coughs> big visual change within computing. Apple was supposedly the guys who uh, stole the first visual operating system in 1984. And then came Windows, um, and now we're on Windows 8, which is another advent in visual uh, operating systems with the, the Metro interface and how that is all developing. So this is all about visualization. Collaboration, the World Wide Web. Um, Tim Berners-Lee, another Englishman after Alan Turing, uh, not that I'm biased, but he, uh, he's been uh, very influential in HTML, so the stuff behind web pages, hypertext markup language, and that's a lot of what collaboration is built on nowadays. So I'm getting there, there's a, there's a story here. Um, email. Email is overused in organizations. Uh, and I'll talk more about that later. That's just a statement. Uh, the at sign used to be used for weighing things. Uh, it's actually chosen, I think, because it wasn't one of the symbols that wasn't really used at the time. So uh, let's use that one. Um, but there's different stories around uh, that. Internet. So we're moving into businesses now. So how do we take mapping into businesses? Internet's normally within a business where we share things, software out there now, things like SharePoint, uh, IBM Connections, for example. And there are lots of challenges that people have collaborating on those environments. Instant messaging. Uh, I, uh, yeah, there, there's lots of instant messenger programs out there. They're not necessarily around a process. A lot of people use it just to chat to their friends in the office. Is it really a, a collaboration tool? Uh, not sure even now. Then we're starting to get into more recent things. So virtual conferencing, application sharing, uh, could include things like Box and Dropbox, for example. The guys who invented Box, I think they're 23 and 24, and multi-millionaires. Um, and then came lots more of these sort of applications where you share files. And then we've got this micro-blogging, so we've got uh, Twitter and Facebook could fit into that. And then Yammer, for example, which is which is supposed to be the, the next big thing, Microsoft buying it and making it the next uh, sort of enterprise social media. Okay? So that's a little story. 
Uh, what's next? Working as a team. So I think it's generally known that enterprise collaboration hasn't really lived up to the hype. Does anyone actually think that enterprises have nailed this collaboration piece yet? That's no one's put their hand up. Oh, one person. He's got a mouthful, so I won't ask why. <laughs> some, some have, some have. Um, probably a smaller organisation, maybe. <coughs> so, um, a little bit of research by some, uh, McKenzie and uh, Forrester. They, they say, and there's lots of stats banded around, is that 70% of the week, working week is spent collaborating. Okay, it depends on what you do, but the number's probably quite high. There's a missed potential there, so people have got improvement, potential to improve the knowledge workers' productivity. We'll talk about reason for that later. And the stat here, which is really worrying, is that 3% of companies derive substantial benefit from social technology. <coughs> so a little unhappy face there. Uh, so there's all this technology out there, fantastic. But if you don't apply it in the right way, it's not going to take off. So, uh, the king of adoption. A lot of you may already know this. Uh, so, Facebook. Who was on Facebook in 2006? Yep, Liam was. We've got a couple of people there. University only, that's why. University only. Well, in 2006, they opened up for people over 13, I believe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, it was at universities before that, and then they opened it to the public, to people over 13. Um, so at that point, uh, it had limited engagement. So you had things like poking and walls and photos and stuff. Uh, and then they started to grow the business and add in content. <coughs> so they started to add things like uh, business pages, uh, third parties to create apps. Uh, so there's a huge market space uh, in designing apps on, on Facebook now. If we look at it now, and this is our uh, Chief Marketing Officer, so he's obviously going to have the best Facebook page you've ever seen. Uh, if you look at it now, there is so much content in there, and people are spending 20 minutes per, on average per, per visit. So they're in there and they're stuck, they're using it. Uh, because there's so much content, uh, and you can read the stats, 42 million business pages, 1.1 billion monthly users, it's huge. Because there's content and there's a reason for them to be there. So they're in there the whole time. They're not sending messages for the sake of it. They're in there sending messages as well about topics, about photos, about content. Okay. So that's just some food, food for thought on how we could apply mapping into this social or enterprise, sorry, uh, collaboration. Bear with me. So what's stopping us uh, from moving mind mapping into organisation? Um, so we, we actually uh, asked some people to do some research for us. Um, and what we wanted to do is find out what the hot trends were last year and this year. And the trends coming from sea level people, what they were talking about in magazines. So the top down approach potentially. Okay, so we could then go and talk to people and say, this is what everyone wants to do. We've got the solution and hang it on their problem. So we did two stages. Uh, we had a, a researcher from the London School of Economics. They basically spent a long time looking at magazines and what people were saying. And they took this data, analysed it uh, from the top uh, FTSE 100 companies, not all but see, but from the UK, Netherlands, and uh, Southern Europe. And the key findings from both of these, the top one was operational efficiency. It's pretty, quite generic, but at a time you'd imagine that would be there if it's a time of where the economy's not growing very fast, people have got to make cuts and be operationally efficient. So that rings alarm bells, that talks about productivity, getting more out of my employees, making them work a little harder maybe. Um, so somehow we've got to fix that, that problem. It's the same for Southern Europe. So the other two there were consolidation, expanding and emerging markets, organic growth and innovation. So as I say, the number one goal was this 
organisational efficiency. So then we thought we'd do a survey as well. So we had 2,000 each, one 2,000 in the UK, 2,000 in the Netherlands and Southern Europe. And what we found is that, this one's quite positive, half of the employees care passionately about their company's goals. And they take it seriously. So that's great. But what are they going to do about it? A third of those people said that they recognise there is opportunity to change, but they just haven't got round to it. Okay. So if I'm talking to... Okay, I can't say to my mum because I don't really use email. Uh, but I'm talking to my friends in the pub and I'm saying... Okay, well, they say to me, well, so what do you do? I say, so well, what do you do for a job? Normally I already know. Um, so I say, well, how many times have you been, you've been running your project to, to publish your website? How many times have you had 10 different emails that you forgot to file somewhere? How many times have you lost that plan that you know you made in the meeting, but you, you couldn't find it? Uh, and they're like, yeah, 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 that happens all the time. Uh, why haven't you done something about it? Oh, because, you know, I can just, I know the way I work. They're stuck in their ways. And this, this is what I, I personally think this has been the biggest obstacle to changing because taking notes on a bit of paper is pretty easy. You have to make a concerted effort to change the way you work and to see the benefits. Uh, and the last thing that they said is they're looking for better support. Uh, lack of resources, lack of direction, inefficient communication, one of the lower ones. Uh, so we got a chap, an economist, to evaluate this for us, um, and this is basically the summary I said, the re research reveals interesting but worrying insights that people know there's a problem, but they're not doing something about it. Okay, so what can we do? So the situation in enterprises is, this is very, very simplified. Um, people depend on information and the way they use the information. They've got employees, which then are in parts of teams, and then right at the bottom you've got the three things. Knowledge, so you turn information into knowledge. People will be creative, which is what we've been talking about today. And then you've got to communicate it somehow. And it's this bit uh, where every person I speak to struggles to do, like my boss did, doesn't communicate it with other people. And that's potentially the way he's using it. So he was using it to take, take notes, a great thing to do. But then after that, he'd take that and move it into an email and then send an email, and then it would be kind of be lost. So he's, then, he's got the plan, so he, he knows what he's done, but he didn't share it with us, and then he hasn't tracked what's happened next. So these are some of the things we're thinking about, uh, and I'm thinking about and talking to people, is how can we plug some form of visualization into their process and make them more efficient. So this is where it works. Enterprise depends on projects, so everything's really a project. Um, we're going to go on a work night out. That's a project. Uh, you've got to organize people and have a budget and all those different things. So if we can fit into these projects in every single day, then hopefully then we can get people to adopt uh, the mind mapping concept. Uh, I haven't done a very good job of setting this up, have I? Uh, okay, so let's go on to here in the, uh, the time. So these are types of people that we talk to a lot. Um, people, project managers, and technically minded people. We actually see people in the, in the Nordic countries uh, in Holland as well, uh, seems to adopt the software very early. England seems a bit behind. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, America is another, another different uh, kettle of fish. So, but how do we make this more accessible? And this is my own personal opinion: is that when you say the word mind mapping, people think, "Oh yeah, I did that." They don't do that, they did that. And, and so you're, they're already thinking, okay, well, you're trying to teach me something new. I'm, I'm quite happy the way I'm doing stuff. Um, so it's all about visual, visualization. It's all about visualizing things. So if we can take visualization and add it onto collaboration, onto this messaging, and have it as part of the environment, then 
think it becomes a much compelling argument. Tie that to with what they're doing and how they do it and how you can save X amount of time per meeting, per day, per employee, per office. You then have quite a compelling uh, business case. So some approaches to finish up. Uh, idea generation to everyday tasks. So how do we take that great initial collecting our ideas down, structuring our ideas, adding dependencies, all that great stuff that we all know. How do we then move from there? What's next? Time, someone said time earlier. Is it just a matter of time? 40 years. I mean, that's a bit depressing. I don't think it's going to take 40 years. Um, but if we're uh, constantly out there and that people move this way and software moves this way, hopefully we can meet in the middle. middle. Is visualisation the secret source and the added structure that is needed in this social enterprise collaboration? Still sending little <coughs> messages for the sake of it, do we need to add that around a project and group it all in a nice visual structure? Email, uh, again people, it's easy to use, but it's not very effective. Mind mapping, uh, talking about that and how we can just talk about it differently. It's the same concept, maybe used in different ways. Keep educating people, so we've got the, uh, the, the bottoms up approach or the top down. Uh, this is how uh, Mindjet as a company has grown. People and partners and resellers and users have been using it and said, oh, what's that? That's exactly how uh, I found out about it. And then, last but not least, uh, awareness. So guys like uh, Bigger Plate, who are actively driving people towards content, and that's the, the, the key, as we mentioned, having, like Facebook, having content. <coughs> uh, it's no use if you've got a blank page, you need some content to drive people towards it. <coughs> and uh, that's the end of that.